This podcast may contain paid advertisements, but more on that later. Welcome to the O'Connor Bootstrap Podcast, where I discuss the nuts and bolts of business and leadership, with a focus on bootstrapping a business from the ground up. This podcast is for all entrepreneurs, bootstrappers, and leaders in all walks of life. My goal is to help you grow both personally and professionally. I am your host, Isaiah O'Connor. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking about a subject I talked about in my very first blog and my one of my first podcasts. I think it's an important subject. Matter of fact, if you've been a longtime podcast listener, I hope you don't get bored, but I'm going to be revisiting a lot of the stuff I talked about from before, trying to bring some new angle on it, some new information, new insight to it, as well as perhaps a little bit more visual stuff I'm going to be adding into the mix because this is now a video cast as well as a podcast. So do bear with me as we go on this journey of video. So today I'm going to be reading from a little bit from and expanding on my podcast I wrote entitled a, the, a, the Life Lesson from Stan Lee. So I'm going to share the screen for my blog real quick. My blog, by the way, is athos.com forward slash blog. It's co-written by my business partner, Jason St. Clair. And if you can see over here, Life Lesson, Stan Lee. Nice picture I got. It was a free to use one. It says Excel, skills, Excelsior, be, ex be excellent to each other, Stan Lee. So I'm going to read a little bit of this and we'll be jumping about a little bit. So in 1961, when Stan Lee was 38 years old, he had been working in the comic book industry for 22 years. He had started when he was 17, or actually 16 and a half, when his uncle got him the job. And it wasn't really the most prestigious work. Uh, he was actually very embarrassed. Matter of fact, he'd be like, you go to the parties, people are like, what do you do? I'm an engineer. What do you do? I'm even a, I'm a construction worker. I'm, what do you do? I'm like, what? What do you mean? I work in comic books. Well, what'd you say? I, I work in comic books. It was not something you would talk out loud. You'd kind of mumble. It was it, it was a thing. He he wasn't too excited about. Matter of fact, he was wanting to quit. You see, the comics code and the industry standards were keeping him locked into one type of comic book. Even though they had superhero stories, they had boring superhero stories. Superhero would come and save the kitten from the tree or some alien invasion. It was very bubblegum pop-ish. When he didn't like doing that, he was kind of tired. Um, the real crimes were not allowed. He had to be very clean. Yeah, it wasn't great. So let's go read what happened to change his mind in his own word. So, so let's go over here. And for those of you on the audio right now, I am just going to go and read from Stan Lee's own words. Here we go. So, do, do, do. Oh, it was even, I didn't even realize how bad it was. People were starting to remove furniture from the offices. <laughs> Stan, I never remember there being being there when people were moving out of the furniture. Chuckles. If they ever moved the furniture, they did it during the weekend when everyone was home. Jack tended to be toward hyperbole, hi, hyperbole, just like the time he was quoted saying that he came in and I was crying and I said, please save the company. I'm not a crier. I would never have said that. Okay, and we'll skip past a little bit. During that period when you put out very few books, did you feel that your days in comics were limited and maybe the whole thing was going to die? Stan, believe it or not, I felt that way until we started Marvel Comics. I never threw 
thought that this would last. Laughs. When did I start? 40, I think. It was the third issue of Captain America. Okay, I'm skip down. So we talked about Captain America going down. Did you ever think about bringing back Captain America? Asked the Human Torch and the Submariner. Dan, no, I really want to know, do something new. You probably heard this story. I wanted to quit at the time. I was really so bored and really too old to be doing these stupid comic books. I wanted to quit. I was also frustrated because I wanted to do comic books that were, even though this seems like a contradiction in terms, I wanted to do a more realistic fantasy. Martin wouldn't let me, and he wanted the stories done the way they had always been done, with a very young children in mind. That was it. My wife, Joan, said to me, you know, Stan, if they ask you to do a new book about a new group of superheroes, why don't you do them? That way you feel you, the way that you feel you'd like to do a book. If you want to quit anyway, the worst that could happen is that he'll fire you, and so what? You want to quit figured, eh, hey, maybe she's right. That's why I didn't want to do a torch and some mariner. I wanted to create a new group and do them the way I'd always wanted to do a comic book. That's what happened. And this goes on in the interview where they talk about more details about it, and then he went on to create the Fantastic Four. So, what happened after that? Let's see here. Okay, I do apologize for the roughness of the video, still learning how to share screens back and forth, whatever. So we go back to where I was going. So Stan was wanting to quit. His wife said, do what you want, try again, something else. So he tried it. He wrote the Fantastic Four. and it started doing good. It, not just good, but very good. Very, very good. Matter of fact, it did so well that they started getting fan letters. Not one, not two, but in his words, a flurry of fan letters showing its popularity. This one event gave him what he needed to keep going. He decided not to quit. And he went on to change the entire world of comic books and movie industries. Doing all this, after doing all this, he, he appeared in 57 cameos. I thought about showing some of those here. I wasn't sure where copyright is, so I'm not going to do too many, but I might go find a YouTube clip to play a few. But he appeared in 57 cam cameos. In Marvel movies, DC Comics, he cameoed in Mallrats. I didn't even know that until I was researching today. He's now a household name, and his face and his voice are instantly and highly recognizable all over the world. He was an amazing guy. So between the age of 38 and his passing in 2018 at the age of 95, it was 57 years since his whole life changed. So I wrote this right, this is right after Stan Lee died, this kind of my memorial to him. And the, the reason I picked this to start with, this, why did I pick this story to remember him? What, of all the stories about Stan Lee, his creating the comic books, the, his cameos, why this story? And why does this story have to do anything to do with business, anything to do with being a bootstrapper or leader or anything like that, why this? Well, because there, there's a underlying moral here, which is this. As long as you're drawing air, it's not too late to find success and happiness in life. Now, don't miss that. As long as you're breathing, it's not too late. And you don't need to give up. And you know what? It, it can be hard. You might want to get up, give up. I've wanted to give up multiple times. I, I've lost count of how many times I've wanted to give up. Uh, you can be working a dead-end job, 
working paycheck to paycheck, as I just talked about in my origin story, getting a job, barely making it by, in a country not my own, trying to learn a language not my own, trying to figure out how things worked in a strange country. It's not hard. You want to give up. It's very easy to want to give up. But it's not too late to make a change. It's not too late to go ahead and do something different. It's not too late to go ahead and start that business you want to start, that restaurant you want to start. So most important thing is you need to actually start. Actually start. Now let's go take a look here. How old is too late? Let's, let's take a look. Um, eh, I can't exactly say. Grandma Moses, artist. She started painting at 78 years old and created 1,500 works of art by the time she died. 1,500 art pieces. She started at 78 years old. Let's see if I can find a picture. Yeah, let's take a look here. I really need to get better at this, but here we go. Look here, Google search, Grandma Moses, paintings. 78 years old, never did anything before with painting, just decided to start painting. And is now super famous for all of these paintings. Let's just pick one random one. Oh, here, here's a picture. Grandma Moses, little old lady starts painting and starts making amazing artwork. 78 years old. Let's look at, um, who else? Oh, she died at the age of 101. Colonel Sanders, KFC, he started at 65. Samuel L. Jackson was 46 years old. And the, the list goes on and on and on. Matter of fact, let's do a quick Google. By the way, if you're stuck in the rut and you want to get out, you got to change. Because as they say, if you keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result, that's a form of insanity. So share screen. Here we go. I personally use uh, Firefox, not Google, and, and, and DuckDuckGo. I don't like tracking cookies. So let's go let's see Google. Famous or successful after 40? And let's see, 20 people, 45 stars, 25 people. Let's keep going. Six, 20 entrepreneurs who built the companies, 20 people, 15 authors, six successful women, 40 famous architects, and so on and so forth. Life After 40, get inspired by these 52 late bloomers. On and on and on and on and on and on and on. So as you see, if you're feeling stuck, if you're hitting the grind and you're feeling like, well, am, is, am I too old? Is it too late? Maybe you're 20 years old and you don't feel like it's too late. Great. Maybe you're 16 years old and you stumbled across this YouTube channel, video channel so, for some reason thinking, oh, well, maybe I'm too young. No, you're not too young. You're not too old. But the biggest part is you need to start. You need to just go out and try. Yeah, you might fail. You might blow it. You might not succeed at first. You try again. Another podcast for that. And you just got to make the choice to go ahead and do something crazy, do something ambitious, do something different. 
Stan Lee went and did the comic the way he wanted to. And then all of a sudden, things turned around. 38 years old. So you never know when things are going to change, when things are going to turn around. And I've been there. I've wanted to quit before, multiple times before. I, I know the struggle. It's real. And I can guarantee, looking back at this, here we are coming through the end of the whole COVID mess. Um, my main business is a balloon decorator and entertainer. I make balloon decorations for large corporations and events, and I do balloon animals, and I'm a balloon clown for kids at birthday parties, and COVID hit, and that went to pretty much zero. Yeah, I got a gig here, got a gig there, but it was absolutely horrifically dead in the water, my business. Felt like quitting quite a few times. As you can imagine, it was not easy being in the event industry during COVID. A lot of my friends, a lot of the people I know in the event industry closed down, sh closed down shop, went bankrupt, had to change everything they were doing. One company I was involved in that was just about to launch, they had a huge grant. They had millions and millions of kroner, Norwegian crowns, in investments from the government, from private industry. They were ready to launch, and they were aiming to launch in March of 2000. And COVID hit, and it delayed launch, delayed launch, delayed launch. And at this point, I don't even know if they're going to launch at all or if it's dead in the water. COVID was rough. And looking back, it's easy to want to quit. But pushing through, all of a sudden my business came back. My employees came back. I've got business that's covering up now. I'm starting to make money. And I also landed another job building arcade machines, I also, which I also landed a job building playground equipment, doing other stuff to survive and make it through things I never expected to happen. But I pushed through. And now, at least here in Norway, there is hope, guys. Hopefully, over there in, in the States, you get more of this. Norway has finally lifted all COVID restrictions, and we're back to normal-ish. And business is starting to come back. I'm getting inquiry after inquiry after inquiry. I'm getting party after party after party. People are ready to party. And it was worth pushing through and holding on because you don't know when the breakthrough is going to happen. You don't know what's happening on the other side. Anyway, I'm going to just wrap this up with this again. That what I said there is this. As long as you're drawing air, it's not too late to find success and happiness in life. And even through this type of mess, even if you fail and you try again, try again. Because you might success might be right around the corner. You don't know. You won't find out unless you try. Anyway, talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye. If you found value in this content, please leave a comment and give us a five-star rating on whichever podcast platform you use. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and most other podcast platforms. If you would like to support us, you can check out our sponsor links, or if you would like to directly support the show, you can donate or join our membership program at buymeacoffee.com forward slash bootstrap. Of course, it really helps when you share these podcasts as well. If you would like to interact with me and other bootstrappers and leaders, you can join our O'Connor Bootstrap Podcast Facebook group.